the demographic pattern of Fremantle has been changing over a period of time. Um, statistics uh, revealed by past census um, and a series of census have indicated uh, that uh, this community is changing to being a more academically educated community than in the past. That there are more people who are professionals that are living in the community, whereas it uh, tended in the past to be more working class and that many of the people, for example, have moved in to live in Fremantle over the last decade or so and don't have a car because it's close to public transport. They're people who are ecologically aware and that's the type of people that, that are coming into Fremantle. And that's probably because, in part at least, of the, the attraction of Fremantle. It is an iconic location. It is a creative community and worldwide I think there's an acceptance that those types of communities are the types of communities that attract people who are well educated and highly paid and uh, professional as such. The population of Fremantle has remained relatively static for, for a considerable period of time. One of the issues that Fremantle uh, faces is that there has to, to a degree been some arresting of, of development compared to what's happening in other locations in Perth metropolitan area. The, the employment remains static, it actually hasn't gone backwards, uh, uh, but you might argue it has gone backwards because it's remained static vis-a-vis uh, -vis or relative to what's happening in other communities where uh, employment is increasing. For example, that uh, Subiaco uh, has had an increase of in employment and that's because they've been very successful with the program of revitalisation that's led to increased office uh, space accommodation which has attracted a number of firms and businesses to relocate their offices and their businesses to, to, that, uh, to that area and as a consequence the, um, the population or the working population has increased. In the case of Fremantle that development hasn't occurred and as a consequence employments remain static. We know for example that there are, uh, the, the retail is relatively uh, stagnant in Fremantle in terms of, um, of space and quality of space. But a lot of the office space uh, in Fremantle is aged um, uh, office space is, is judged to be A class, B class or C class. A very large proportion of Fremantle's office space is essentially C class. There is a policy release that's coming out in the very near future called 2031 which identifies the importance for the state or for the Perth metropolitan area going forward uh, to strengthen so-called activity centres in relation to retail shopping in relation to commercial office space and in relation to uh, uh, higher density residential living. Um, and those activity centres are specifically aligned to the transport hubs uh, or centres in the Perth metropolitan area. And obviously Fremantle has the potential to play a significant role there because there is a substantial transport hub, bus and rail immediately adjacent to the CBD. And you know, part of the thinking about that in the broader sense is about sustainability because it's an attempt to try and stop people in the Perth metropolitan area, uh, uh, you know, the bulk of them, travelling into the Perth CBD every day to work and then travelling back out to the suburbs again. So the idea is to create an environment where, or, or places where people live, work and shop. The biggest challenge is probably putting in the appropriate planning regimes that uh, attract uh, investment that will lead to achieving the council's aspirations and uh, imperatives and that is more people, more commercial office space and more retail floor space. At the end of the day they, from an economic development perspective, they are the core um, imperatives of the council. Thank you.